All right, welcome everybody. My name is Gibby, and I am here with author, professor, and doctor Sleeve McDykel from Cambridge. He's a professor of philosophy. He has a doctorate in philosophy and cosmetology. Cosmology. And he, cosmology. And he wrote a book called Chris Tianity, The Study of Christian Ricardo Weston Chandler. Today we will be answering the question, is Chris Chan God? Professor, would you like to start our discussion? Uh, yeah, sure. So after studying at Cambridge for many years, um, I became very obsessed with the idea of God until a few years ago when I stumbled upon Chris Chan. After watching Chris Chan for some time, reading Sanachu, uh, listening to everything he has to say, it occurred to me he was the missing link in my book that I'm writing, Christianity. I explore many philosophies that have been passed down from generation to generation and use Christian as the missing link to everything. So he's a key point in your thesis. Yes, exactly. You, you, were, you were writing a paper, you were writing a book, and it didn't make sense until you discovered Christian. Exactly. Okay. You showed me some of this in our email correspondence, and you were going off about Plato and the, the theistic God, capital G. I don't know anything about any of that. Something about the allegory of the cave, I learned that in high school. Uh, yeah, so are you familiar with uh, Plato? Yes, he gets the newspaper for Mickey Mouse. Yeah, that one. My work really stems from a idea of one of Plato's main philosophies, which is the theory of forms and idealism. How idealism works is that our reality, what we can see, touch, feel, everything, draws from a, another reality, an above reality. This reality has been called Platonic Heaven. Uh, you can just call it the one reality or the one above reality. And it's where we get everything from. So this above reality is one that is non-spatial and atemporal. So it exists outside of space and time. It's timeless and there's like it's intangible. So this is something that Plato actually believed, right? He wrote this stuff down? Um, Aristotle wrote it down? So, yeah. So everything that we know about Plato um, comes from his writings that were all um, discussions between either real people or fake people. It's kind of questionable whether he actually believed this or not, but it's an idea that came from his writing. So this is the platonic form stuff. This is like every cat on Earth has some tr one true form of a cat that exists in Plato's platonic heaven that that decides what features of them make them a cat. Right? Yeah, Something so like that. in this platonic heaven, in this reality, there is a form for everything. And the things that we see are just imperfect adaptations mm -hmm. of this form. So the forms are perfect in everything, in and of themselves. And what we see are imperfect adaptations of them. Okay, okay. Um, so this, Plato really used this to get over the um, problem of universals, which is a big problem in metaphysics, which is like, what, like, why is a tree a tree? And what's everything that's a tree? Like, what is a tree? Because I can point to a palm tree or an evergreen tree. What makes them all trees? Okay. Um, so the platonic forms were the truest nature of all of these things combined. So, this platonic heaven, this um, reality above reality. Um, and so when you say heaven, this isn't like we die and we go there. This is just a reality that exists above our own. We are a, we are contained within it. I just don't want people to think like, oh, this is the yes, yeah, so, there so, so Yeah, so when I say platonic heaven, I don't mean heaven as, as like Christianity's heaven. Okay. I mean heaven as in just... just it's called that because it's above, it's above everything. Okay. It's above all. Um, Neoplatonists will talk about this a lot. Um, the idea of the one. So we are going to call the one uh, supreme God. So there's going to be a few um, differences. There's the supreme God, which I'm going to talk about now, which is otherwise known as the one, which is the amalgamation of every form. 
Okay. Supreme God is equal to Platonic Heaven. It just is. There is no being that is Supreme God. Supreme God is being in this non-spatial, atemporal existence. So unlike the the Christian God, which people would say has a has a personality or a consciousness, this being doesn't have a consciousness, but it still is everything. Exactly. Okay. It's 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 the perfect form of everything. Of everything. It is made up of all of the forms. So like kinda like the um, Spinoza's theory of everything, where the universe is equal to God. And everything is just made up of substance, which is God. And it's very important to remember that this supreme God exists outside of space and time. Okay. Now, we're going to shift lanes a little bit. So that's the supreme God. Now I'm going to try to talk about capital G God. So like what people would say the Christian God would be or anything like that. Like so the... So the, Judaism, the, the, Islam, yeah, the all theistic forms of Christianity. God. There's a theistic God in Hinduism, like just all powerful, omniscient, omnipresent. It's everywhere. It knows everything. It can do anything. Yes, exactly. Okay. As opposed to a lowercase G God, which would be something like Zeus or Thor, which are just superheroes. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Um, so William Lane Craig um, came up with the Kalam cosmological argument. Kalam. Um, yes, Kalam. I don't know what that means. Um, that's a good question, either do I. <laughs> so, um, Me with my English degree. <laughs> so, basically... So I know this big word. Don't know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a bunch of arguments for God. Um, the, the, uh, the theological, ontological, and cosmological are some main ones. So I'm going to be talking about the cosmological argument, because as a... Because you're a cosmologist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Does so, cosmos literally just mean space? Yeah, it's universe. Okay. It's just the cosmology is just the study of the cosmos of the universe. Okay. Um, so a lot of people that study it are also physicists. That they kind of go pretty hand foot. So the uh, the first part of this argument is just the statement that whatever begins to exist has a cause. So nothing can begin to exist without a cause. Um, that makes sense. Even things that we don't necessarily like know what the cause is just because we don't know it doesn't mean that there isn't a cause Agreed. and you can't really prove that it happened uncaused um so that's the first part the second part is the universe began it okay. is it so it had to have a cause. started so therefore the universe has a cause okay um, i agree with you most scientists say that this is the big bang Mm -hmm. That's the four most scientific. I don't know if all scientists say it was the Big Bang. Well, there, there are there are different discussions oh, yes, about the small more, bang. Yeah, the small bang, the little bang. So again, the, it had a start. That start was the Big Bang. Um, we can also there's other ways of figuring this out. Like um, the main scientific thesis for the end of the universe is the heat death mm -hmm. of the universe. Um, so if there is an end that we can calculate, then again, it must have started. Interesting. Um, so again, that's just everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. Okay. Simple enough. Uh, this cause must be transcendent, uh, meaning it has to be non-spatial and atemporal, because when the universe began, space and time began. So the cause of it can't be within space, and it cannot be within time. So whatever caused the universe has to exist outside, outside of the universe. universe. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And the platonic realm or whatever is also outside the universe. Exactly. Okay. And if it's outside the universe, then it's not affected by the passage of time and spatial distance and all that? Exactly. Like any law of physics we can think of? Yes. Theoretically? Okay. So again, I, I'm just waiting for this to get the hedgehogs. <laughs> so this fits pretty well with this supreme god being um, the cause of the universe. Obviously, in order to create everything, must be enormously powerful. 
It must be made of something, obviously. Yeah. So this supreme god, um, as I said before, it's not... Uh, it doesn't have consciousness, right? Because it's just the perfect form of everything. But it's still okay. immensely powerful and it's generating these immensely powerful waves. Creating... Um, so it's emitting these immensely powerful waves, um, which we believe caused the Big Bang. Okay. So this platonic reality caused the Big Bang and brought our universe into being. The uh, theoretical cosmologist Sean Carroll um, first posited that it would be kind of absurd to assume that the Big Bang is a single event. There's no reason why this can't be constantly happening, why there aren't constant Big Bangs bringing universes into being. This enormously powerful supreme god is constantly generating this power, constantly hmm. sending Big Bangs into effect. And these would be like parallel universes to ours. Yes. Like they wouldn't touch ours. Yeah, they're completely like there's, separated. There's other universes over here, and then that one's over there, and that one's over there, and like they're just different universes made up of everything. Does that mean it's possible that there's some stuff in the platonic form world that has no representation in our universe? 100%. So yeah. like there's stuff that exists that does not exist in our entire universe. Absolutely. And will never exist. Yes. That's really interesting. Um, so there's also, this is a big topic with platonic forms of if I make something new that's never existed before. When I make something new, that platonic form of that new thing I made doesn't just pop into platonic heaven. It was always there because platonic heaven is atemporal. So, so you like discovered we, it. Kind of yeah, like math. Exactly. Okay. So it, 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 it is math. So I found it in this universe, but it just is in this atemporal supreme god. Well, so by that argument, Chris Chan didn't create Sonichu, he discovered him. Yes. Well, Chris claims he created him. Chris can be wrong. Ooh, this hot is, take here. This is... Hot take from the true believer. This is one of the Goddess things... Goddess Blueheart can be wrong. <laughs> this is one of the things that you need to accept, is that you can be wrong. Chris can be wrong. So, for instance, um, the platonic form of what a planet is mm -hmm. exists. Okay. It isn't necessarily one-to-one -one with what we define a planet as. So, for instance, Pluto mm -hmm. either... Mickey Mouse is talking again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Either does or does not possess the platonic form, or doesn't participate in the platonic form of... Being a planet. Planethood. We used to call it a planet, and now we don't. Exactly, but if... So that means that our definition of a planet didn't meet up with the actual platonic form of a planet, because we incorrectly labeled Pluto as one. Exactly. That's where you're getting at, got yeah. it. Yes. Makes sense. Um, so, because we, we don't have a perfect understanding mm. of this, so this is actually okay. super involved, because the philosopher Pluto, not the planet or the dog, um, said that what brings a philosopher to a ascended level is their understanding of the forms. So you can be a great thinker, you can be a great person, you can all of that, but when you understand the form better, you're peering into this supreme god and you have a higher knowledge of it. That is exactly how Chris described looking into C-197. Yes. Looking into Quickville. Yes. Okay. Um, so, he can but, look into it and gain this higher ontological knowledge, but it still doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. Okay. But, so I get that, but the quick C-197 is, is C-197 the forms world? Not quite. Okay. So, um, something else, I'm just, just talking about Chris's, can, how he can be quote unquote wrong, um, kind of like in our universe, I can look at something like a blue and black dress mm -hmm. and know for a fact 
that it's blue and black. Mm-hmm. Someone else can look at the same dress and know without a doubt in their mind that it's, it's white and gold. It's white and gold, yeah. Um, one of us is one of us wrong because the dress necessarily has to be one. It can't be both. But yeah. all of my faculties are telling me it's one. All of their faculties are telling them is the other. We can, even though we, we see something, we, we can be wrong. Kind of like Chris. Chris has this higher ontological knowledge of this other universe, but he can still see wrong, hear wrong, think wrong. Okay, so he's not he's not perfect. He's not capital G God. Correct. So he can still be incorrect. Yes. Okay. Um, and he even he doesn't claim he's capital G God. He just says he's a deity along the lines of Buddha and Jesus and the CPU goddesses from Hyperdimension Neptunia. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so getting back to capital G God, um, these constant big bangs that are happening because of the power of Supreme God, um, even though it's, it's in a constant state of big bangs, it's still extremely rare for a big bang to happen so perfectly that it can hold a universe that doesn't collapse in on itself. Okay. So we're that. constant big bangs, constant billions upon trillions of universes being made constantly. In a in a realm that has no time. So exactly. Like, this is just it just is. Like us using the word constant doesn't even portray how constantly it's happening. Exactly. Okay. But it's still so extremely rare that a universe can survive that it can be made and then have existence that there aren't infinite so there's less than there's yeah. infinite universes but there's still so 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 many that we can sort of like assume a lot of things yes okay um one of those so things... I'm, I'm familiar with uh, the infinite multiverse theory as like portrayed in Rick and Morty, which is where Chris gets a lot of his stuff from, which states that because there's infinite universes, everything has happened in at least one universe. Yes, but that's not necessarily true. Um, there's also obviously different universes where there's different laws of physics and stuff like that. Um, one of the things that's necessary for the universe to exist is a capital G God coming into existence with it. One God per universe? Yes, one capital G God per universe, which is contained by the universe. So it's not as all-powerful as the Supreme God, because the Supreme God can do, if, if it was conscious, could do anything like break laws of um, logic. It can do the impossible, but the capital G God... So impossible as in, uh, as in theoretically the, impossible, so 2 plus 2 equals 5. Yeah, and it can make a square circle. Okay. Because it just is. Um, but this capital G God that's contained within the universe can't. It's constrained by the laws of the universe. So you, you're not... This isn't a mainstream thing. You can't just Google your terms for things. Because you're still in the process of creating this philosophy. Yes. That revolves around Christian. Yes. Okay. It doesn't revolve around Christian. Christian is the key to it. Okay. He's the he's what's bringing it to the next level. So the other thing is that again, as I said before, the supreme god can be like math. It doesn't have. It doesn't think. It just mm-hmm. is. Um, this capital G god has a mind. It is personal. It's thinks, not like how we think, but it thinks. It is a mind, and it exists temporally and spatially. Okay. And it's what designs the universe. So again, Supreme God gives its being, and then it does with it what it will. Again, there's a ton of universes. We are lucky enough to have been blessed with someone with a higher ontological um, connection to these other universes. By that, do you mean Chris Chan? Like, he exists in our universe? 
Yeah, so kind of like in um, Avatar Lost Airbender, right? There's the real world and there's the spirit world, right? Okay. And um, they are close to each other. They pass the they pass through one another, and at things like the solstice, the lines between them can be drawn blurry. Okay. So that's kind of like us and some of the other universes, like C-197. Or the Rick and Morty universe, we are lucky enough that when Chris was born, when his soul passed through the rainbow energy that was created, when Pikachu hit supersonic, and his soul passed through that rainbow energy when he was born, that gave Chris a special connection to C-197 and to the other universes. So... So Chris's soul, Chris originally was a god from the Andromeda galaxy, Lorigy god. Yeah, Lorigy god, yeah. Um, born in the Rokat Empire under Jacoba. Yeah. And he rebelled and was killed and his soul was exiled. So I guess that would imply that Jacoba already possessed the ability to dimension hop, which Chris claims that he does. Yeah. Okay. So... Um. That means that C-197, Sonichu Universe, the, the events depicted in the Sonichu comic, uh, Chris has claimed a bunch of other universes, like you said, Rick and Morty, Minecraft, he claims uh, Skullgirls, Dungeons and Dragons. Those universes actually exist because of the almost infinite constant universes that are being created by the Supreme God? Yes. So when I watch Rick and Morty, that's actually happening. Kind of. So, not necessarily how it's depicted, because it's made... It's a TV show. Someone in our universe is making a TV show. That doesn't mean that everything that happens in the TV show is necessarily happening in the Rick and Morty universe. It's just that the um, lines between the universes, when they blur, when they cross through each other, the uh, inspiration for it, it hits the creators. And the creators mm. are, are endowed with these ideas that we think that we just have. So, like, whenever you, if you are a creator, if you're a content creator, you think you're coming up with this. But really, it's just you are being endowed with this knowledge from the other universes. And that is exactly how Chris says it. Chris and Jacob both believe that TV shows are like 90% accurate portrayals of other universes that the creator was granted access to from a higher being or a higher power. Correct. Okay. Um, so that's how, so things like, so uh, in the C-197 universe, Chris calls all these characters in them the prototypicals, right? Yes, yes. Um, the, that's in uh, Son- Sonichu issue 12.9 when Nightstar meets... Christian Knight, uh, Weston, Ricardo, Chandler, or whatever, um, the narrator refers to that character as prototypical, Mm -hmm. meaning, this is for the audience's sake, I'm sure that you know all about this thing as you wrote the book on Chris, uh, basically, the characters that out, that are our alternative versions in other dimensions are prototypicals. Yes, so similar to how the, um, Platonic forms are the perfect ideal forms. These OCs in C-197 are the perfect ideal forms of all of these, what we call, fictional creations. Okay. So, I mean, so... So, like, the the Sonic the Hedgehog in C-197 is the, the real Sonic. Yeah. And when they make when Sega makes a game or when he appears in Wreck It Ralph, that's an interpretation of the real Sonic. The same way that a cat on Earth is an interpretation of the platonic form of a cat. Yeah, so it's Okay. It's uh participating in this perfect form of Sonic. Okay. Um so we call the things that we are granted from the other universes as fictional. Yeah. Now, similar to how we have a lowercase g god and the uppercase g god, we can have lowercase f fiction and uppercase f fiction. So, uppercase f fiction is what is quote-unquote reality in these other universes, that because they're not in our universe, we call it fiction. But then, lowercase f fiction would be our interpretations of this. 
So the fictional fiction, like TV shows, books, movies, all this is the genre of fiction, which is really our interpretation of the uppercase fiction, which is just the reality of the other universes. Okay, so in, in Sonic 2, Chris alludes to the fact that Sonic 06 happened. Yeah. So that would mean that capital F fiction, some version of those events actually happened in C197. Yeah. Lowercase f fiction is our actual video game Sonic 06, which may or may not bear total resemblance to the real events of what happened in C197. Correct. Okay. But C197 is not the only capital F fiction universe because Chris believes that C197, which is the Sonic 2 universe, is not the same universe as Minecraft and Rick and Morty. Yeah, so any of the other universes are... And Equestria. Yeah, all these other parallel universes are capital F fiction because within the universe it's reality, but from the other universes they're fiction because they're not real in our universe. Yes, because, um, so in Equestria, uh, in the Equestria that Chris talks about, all generations of My Little Pony, like, happen and are canon, whereas in the TV shows that we watch, those aren't canon with each other, they're different continuities. Yeah. Um, in Sonichu, the character Nightstar creates one-to-one copies of the Sonichu comics but the characters are ponies and distributes those to the other ponies in Equestria. Yes. So what is... That's lowercase f fiction of the capital F fiction of C197. Correct. So that's just... So that's like, here's a perfect retelling of events except they're ponies and that makes it lowercase f fiction. Yeah, so just like... and Because it works back and forth. So like, in C197, a C197 can have a fiction of us. Okay. We're not above them, we're equal to them, we're parallel. So fiction, capital F fiction, is just so any like reality from a different universe. Any other parallel universe. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there can be fiction written about them the same way that we can write historical fiction. Exactly. Like we can write, here's the perspective of a soldier at Normandy that wasn't real, but the battle was real and yes. the general stuff that happens is real. Exactly. Okay. okay. Interesting. Because Chris does call it our our sister dimension, so like yeah, we're we're parallel to it, I guess. So Chris claims that uh, C one ninety seven specifically is the universe where most of what we consider to be fictional characters live, and he lists off a bunch of things like all the Sanju characters, Pokemon, Sonic, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, uh, all those take place in C one ninety seven. Obviously, in our stories in real life, our lowercase fiction, those events can't take place in the same world. Marvel and DC can't take place on the same Earth within their continuities that we read in comic book form. So what's your explanation for that? Um, So it can be a mix of things. Either, again, it's our misinterpretation of it. Um, And then you can also just have lowercase fictions that are authors bastardizing of them for money like crossovers that might necessarily not make sense okay and um like the uh, like rose choose story or the fan fiction of sonic and rose choose wedding that chris said no those didn't happen like that and he had to go in and kind of rewrite them to canonize them that would be people who can peer into c197 but then change the details for their own storytelling yeah so again so when the lines of the universes draw thin and we're endowed with these ideas, these substances from the other universes, we are a imperfect understanding of them. But okay. Chris, because of who he is and because of his soul passing through the rainbow energy, has the ability to go there and see it for himself and witness it and experience it, which we can't. Because not only does he believe that he can peer through the Iron Curtain and see what's going on, but he believes he can travel there. And he currently, as of the recording of this video, actually, he has swapped bodies with Sonichu. His mind is currently in Sonichu's body. So he, he has higher access to this one 
parallel universe because his soul was exiled there by Jacoba. Yes. Basically. Okay. Getting to the, the actual point, what's probably the title clickbait of this video, why do you then believe that Chris Chan is God or a God or a deity? This, this thesis that you have mm -hmm. is very similar to established multiverse theory. So why is Chris Chan the link? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so Chris Chan is a god, the important link, the deity, because he can travel between them, and he has proof of them. So we don't... I can't go into your mind and find this proof of these other universes. When a content creator is endowed with this knowledge from the other universes because of the connection between them and their OC, I can't know that because you didn't travel there. It's just being brought to you. You're creating it, or you're seeing it. But Chris can travel there. He has something above what we have. He's, he's kind of like how between humans and a more perfect version of humans, all the way up to their platonic form of them, Chris is that above missing link. Like Plato said, when you, um, a philosopher excels and improves themselves when they can peer into the forms. Chris can peer into these other forms from the, you know, these prototypical forms, yeah. Okay, and that means that he's he's above us as normal, regular humans. Yes. Because he has these powers mm -hmm. that he proves that he has by telling us that he has. Yes, exactly. By, okay. By traveling to these other dimensions. It's also, um, so when you think of things like the prototypicals, Chris said specifically that... Um, when we, when a uh, content creator reboots, right, this hurts the prototypicals. Yes, he hates uh, rebooting properties. He thinks that, like, it erases histories and, you know, hurts the, the, the real character. Yes. So why this happens is because of something very important, which is the, our, like, the true forms, the um, platonic heaven forms, exist atemporally, with, out of time. Mm -hmm. But C-197 exists within its universe's time. Yes. So when a reboot happens, this changes the prototypical. So a platonic form is just... It just is. So there's um, there's three versions of Sonic. There's classic Sonic, what we call modern Sonic, and then Sonic Boom. Yes. So the platonic form of Sonic is some version that contains essence of all three of those things. Yes. That way they can all be Sonic. So when Sonic gets rebooted as Sonic Boom, you're saying that the capital F fiction prototypical Sonic in C-197 undergoes a physical change to become that current canon. Yes, because it is... And that physically is, hurts him. Yes, because it is a current going along with time. The platonic form of Sonic in Platonic Heaven just always is whatever it is, and when we reach the point where it changes, it was already changed because it already was. Okay. But the prototypicals in C-197 have to adapt and change when they change because of time. Okay, so, but that would imply that the creators here on Earth aren't peering through the Iron Curtain into C-197. They're actually dictating it they're writing a script for it the the one doesn't have to happen before the other one the prototypicals can change causing the reboot and we would just like interpret it like we don't understand causality enough to be like oh the the reboot of man of steel happened because superman in that universe went through a change yes okay um, or the reboot could happen because we got, a, the, the content creator got a glimpse of one of the sub-fiction universes. So they weren't actively looking at the prototypical Superman, but one of the 
um, below sub-universes of it. So creators cannot actually change what happens in C-197. But Chris can go there because he has the ability to go there physically and change it himself. Yes. But only because he has that power. Yes. So when people uh, ask Chris on Twitter, they'll say things like, uh, oh, I just created an OC with the power to destroy the entirety of C-197, so it's gone now. The reason that he doesn't respond to those criticisms and just blocks those people is because they don't understand that they don't create an OC that appears there. They have to just chronicle their OC. Exactly. And so they're lying about what they have chronicled. Yep. Is what he would say. Yes. And he can dictate to us what's going on there because he has a higher level access than any of us. Yes. I guess you would say that all retcons in Sonic Chu are just that Chris misinterpreted them the first time. Yeah. It's like when Rose Chu flipped back and forth between being trans or not, that was just Chris was wrong. Yeah, just kind of like in our real world, scientists can be wrong. We get more knowledge and then we change what we think. Okay, well, what about Chris's uh, inability to actually prove his powers? He, he, so, I guess we have to just get to the big topic at hand. The dimensional merge. Mm-hmm. Chris believes that our dimension and C-197 are merging. Yes. And that when this happens, we will merge with our OC. I guess whichever one of our OCs is, like, the most like us. Mm-hmm. What reason is there to believe this? And what reason is there to think that Chris currently has psychic powers. Well, if a scientist, right, is looking through a telescope and sees a comet or a meteor coming to the planet, Mm -hmm. and they tell you, hey guys, there's a giant space rock coming here, and I just looked at it, are you not going to go take cover? I believe it would be reasonable to defer to the expert, yes. Yes. So, if the scientist looking through the telescope can see it, Chris, who can peer through the Iron Curtain into the other universe, can see it. Why not heed the warning? I guess just as a a non-believer, I just wouldn't count Chris as an expert. I think that's how most people feel. So just like how Chris has this higher connection to our world and the C-197 world, um, similarly, Magichan is the closest being that we know of, that Chris knows of, uh, to be able to cross into our world from C-197. Yeah, Chris and Magichan have swapped bodies, and uh, Chris says that Magichan has visited Earth a couple times. Yes. And has become tangible to him. Mm -hmm. So if you don't believe Chris... Which I don't. Would you believe Magichan? I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> if Magichan was real, then I would definitely believe him because he's theoretically the most intelligent, psychically powerful being in existence. But to get to that point, I would have to assume the existence of Magichan in order to then trust Magichan about his own existence. And that's where my head starts hurting. <laughs> So do you, you specifically, believe that our dimensions are merging and that soon you will merge with your OC and 30% of the planet will be wiped out and we will be able to fly around with superheroes and Bugs Bunny, as Chris predicts? Well, yeah. Do you believe that when Jesus told you that when you die, you get to go to a magical cloud planet? I don't see the big difference here. So it's... You're, you're admitting that it's a religion. So far, it's been philosophy and science, but trusting in Chris's prediction in the dimensional merge is a religion. It's, it's, it's a faith. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't call it a religion so much as faith. I have my ideas the, between the cosmological arguments, the uh, philosophy of it, 
but then uh, takes the higher level, the next step, when I have faith in Chris as the deity. Because before when we were talking about like God and stuff, that's not a deity kind of God. That's not like a magic fairy person flying in the sky kind of God. That's just the a theistic, just creator, mm-hmm. but not a deity. Yes. Chris then is the deity, and I have faith in Chris to lead us with the dimensional merge. Okay, so the same way that I believe in theistic capital G God, because I think it's been philosophically proven that there can't not be a God, but to make the jump then to Christianity requires faith, you think that everything about Chris must be true, but then to jump to his prophecies being real requires faith. Yes. So long story short, you think Sonichi was real? Yes. Now, let me ask you an important question. Okay. Does Pegasus exist? Like the character Pegasus from Greek mythology... Um, I'd say there's two versions of the word exist. One means, like, exist in real life, like, at the current moment in time it exists, like, this jar of peanut butter exists right next to my computer. And then the other version of exist would be, like, there is a platonic form of it. Uh, I mean, Pegasus has impacted the world, and we're talking about it right now. So I'd say that, yes, on one level it exists. Exactly. So there is existence, does it exist, I can think of it, I can imagine it, and again, as you said, it has impacted the world, and then there is exists within our universe. So in the same way, because Pegasus exists, if you, if you don't believe in the C-197, because obviously Pegasus exists in C-197, um, if you don't believe in that, you would say that Pegasus exists as a... Um, construct in my mind but doesn't exist in real life in the same way sonichu exists but doesn't exist here right now but there's a platonic form of sonichu yes therefore in one universe or possibly in the future of our universe or even on a different planet in our universe there could eventually exist sonichu yes and therefore on some level he exists correct which could be said about Anything. Yes. Which Anything is possible. Yeah, any possible thing. Which is why everything that could possibly logically coexist exists in C-197. Yes. Okay, I just have one more question for you. Okay. Uh, after the merge, uh, which one of your OCs will you be merging with? Uh, yeah, I'll be merging with Blood Spike the Sharp Tooth. He's an OC from the Land Before Time universe. He's a uh, T-Rex, and although my arms are short, I can carry two Uzis. He is an avid Taylor Swift listener, and the number one Trekkie. Everybody, this has been Dr. Professor Sleeve McDichel. You can follow him on Twitter at... The Real Donald Trump. (laughs) (laughs) You can follow him on Twitter at The Real Donald Trump. And I hope you all can see now how it would be possible that Chris Chan is God and that it's true, all of it.